Okay then, do you want to build a snowman? Right, I'm going to turn a giant snowman. I did one of these a while ago and it was a very popular video, so I'll do another one because uh, I have a really nice piece of wood here to do it with. What this is, is it's a piece of driftwood that I have left over from doing this video. Right, I'll stick a link up there and a link below to it. And it's a piece from this wood. Um, right. Large snowmen, they're very nice, they sell very well. Um, but as with anything, it's about proportion. No, I don't have the, the camera's picking it up, but up there, you can see over there, you can probably see a load of blanks. This is the second lot of 50 normal snowmen. Uh, I guess anybody knows I do a lot of markets, and this time of year, snowmen are the thing. Right, so we're going to start this off, and what I'll do is I'll I, just to save time, I already rounded it off and stuck it in a chuck. Right, and uh, what I'm going to do is just separate out the parts. Right, so head there, middle part of the body there, bottom of the body there, and base there. Right, so we'll put these in. We'll grab a skew for a peeling cut oh yes there's no yorkshire grip bit this week because uh i actually can't get it uh yorkshire grit has been bought by uh, yorkshire grit as a company has been bought by easy wood tools in america and yorkshire grit is now going to be getting produced in the states exclusively and um the carpentry store are out of it and easy wood tools aren't ready to export yet so i have to go with something else so uh when it gets to time to where the yoshi group would normally be i'll be using something else and i'll tell you what i think of it so let's get this down Right, now we start shaping it. Right. Uh, right, as usual, when I'm doing a snowman, right, basically there's going to be three sections and a base, right, and the whole trick is middle, middle, middle. I'll just put those marks on it so you can see what I'm doing. I'm basically going to create balls with those high points as the middle of them. Faster than that, I think. That's better. The rough shapes in for us. Right, I'm going to take down this one because I won't be able to get in there. If I leave that one so high. Detail goes in there a bit more. Right. 
Same again here. I said I'm just rubbing the shape out at the moment. finish cuts and stuff afterwards detail gouge again bring it in give myself a nice transition between the segments Yeah, we get those finish cuts in. You know, I need to go in there a little bit more with that detail gouge. I don't like that segment. That's better. Now. Find them a bit more. Get a nice decent cut on for finishing. I still think that head is a little big, so I'll bring it down a little. knob off the top. Get rid of the tile stuff now. Finish cut on the head. wood is kind of very punky in places being driftwood it would be of course now I'm not too pushed about the top there because it's going to uh, have a hat on it but I just want to make sure that the top is round so the hat will sit properly right then
Yeah, it's quite a bit iffy there. But this being drift wood, as I said, it's kind of soft in places. So I'm going to have to sand some of this out. Right, so I will sand this and I'll be back in a sec with not the oxygen grip bit. Right then, the sand is is dry on this and this is what I'm going to be using instead of the oxygen grip. Right, it's Chestnut's version coat and polish. Right, um, right. The reason that I can't get Yorkshire grit, right? There's one stockist in the country, which is my go-to place, of course, which is the carpentry store. And uh, Glenn has sold the Yorkshire grit company to, as I said, Easy Wood Tools. And I've been told I was on to Anne a few days ago, and she said she's out of stock. Um, possibly three or four weeks but she's not sure before she gets it in again and i was just about out so i needed some so uh she recommended trying this it's uh as i said it's chestnut's version now i was reading the instructions on it and there's a load of warnings on this tin right so i'm gonna be putting a mask on i'm gonna put a pair of gloves on but uh i'll tell you what i think of it Right, um, compared to Yorkshire grit. Right, so we'll mask up, I'll put a glove on, and uh, we'll get going and see what this is like, what this stuff is like compared to Yorkshire grit. Right, what I'll do is, I don't know if you can read those warnings, what I'll do is I'll take a picture of that label and I'll put it up here. Right, uh, and then you know why I'm taking all these precautions with it. Right then, I took the mask off just to have a sniff of it to see what the smell was, see what the smell was. There's a very strong solvent smell off of it. Right. Now, just putting it on here, it feels grittier than the off sugar. Right. If you get what I mean, it's um, it feels rougher. Let's see how it works. Huh? Give this a shot and it basically has the same instructions on it that Yorkshire Grit does put it on what they recommend it is safety cloth which is chestnuts uh, which is chestnut product um, I'm just going to use what I normally use which is paper towel right yes you can definitely feel it's grittier uh, a little rougher. Now it's so strong, the smell of it is so strong, I can actually smell this through the mask. And I have filters in this mask that are rated for resin. So that will tell you how strong the smell actually is after. A bit of a shine starting to come in. I'll make sure I get in those transitions. What I'm watching here is along here because I'm looking to see if I get the same kind of reflection I get with Yorkshire Grid. Right. There is a reflection there. Right. 
but it's not as clear as the one I got out here after this. The, uh, the pull of it working is completely done. Whereas at Yorkshire Grid, I, could, I would still be able to feel some sort of a pull there to tell me it's still abrading. So taking it off and see what happens. It does seem to come off easier than your cigarette. Get a clean piece of towel. Right, let's have a look at this. It does a braid. But I don't think that that is as deep of a shine that I get of the Arctic Grid. The Arctic Grid shine is a bit deeper. Right, I'm going to take this mask off and see if the smell is still there. Not really. I mean, there is still a slight scent there, but the smell is not as much as it was. But I definitely don't think the shine is as deep, and it's left little marks. That the arse route would have taken out. It's not bad though. It's actually not too bad. Right, we'll stick some wax on the top of that. Using the hamster chain, of course. And we'll see what it looks like when it's done. Alright then, just buffing the wax off that very strong um, smell is gone completely. So I said that only kind of hangs around when you're working the stuff. As I said, it's not bad. I'll show you a comparison actually. Here's one, like anybody knows this time of year I churn stuff out, so I basically go into production turning. That's one I did with Yorkshire Grit. Right, and that's the one you just see me doing with the chestnut stuff. Um, okay, the different kind of wood will make a difference. The colours in it and stuff will actually make a difference. Well, that's just a comparison. Right, Yorkshire gritted, chestnut product. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it's bad stuff at all. I just would prefer myself uh, to use Yorkshire grit. It's I prefer to finish off it. Right, now we just part that bit off and get onto the hat. Now, when you're setting up the hat, you can, I normally just do this by your eye, but I'll show you how to do it, right? You're gonna need the hat to sit inside your jaws. So if you just get, open your jaws out to its maximum, right? Set a set of calipers. To the maximum of the jaws are a little smaller. Right. Your rim can be no bigger than that for whatever set of jaws you have. 
Right, your rim can be no bigger. Right. And what I'm going to use is this nice piece of uh, Corley Acacia, which looks quite nice actually. Right, so, first thing I've got to do is, of course, round it off and put a tenon on it for jaws. Right, first thing I'm going to do is face it off. Right. Grab that calipers, check my width. It's less, so that's fine means the jaws will grab it. Then with a parting tool, I'm gonna to create the rim of the hat. Then it's just a simple matter of create the create the hat shape. more of a scoop in it. I like these uh, big hats to have like a flat bit at the top there. Slightly off there. Now I got a hollow out there to make it fit the head. So grab me ball gouge. Let's move this back out of the way a bit more. And then check it against the head. A little deeper needs to be. Yeah, it's about right. You know, just got a nice finish cut in there, and then I'll sand this part of it. Right, right, I'll sand that part, and I'll be back in a sec. Right, just taking the wax off this bit. Now, something you'll notice is that in there, I have put no finish whatsoever. That's because I don't want anything interfering with the gluing surfaces on this. Now, 
take it off, switch to the larger chuck, and finish the top. There's a truck right here. Right, now something I want to do to make sure I don't damage that rim is before I put it in, I want to put some kitchen towel around the rim. make very sure that I don't damage it right and I don't also don't want to squeeze too hard because the marks will go through yeah. the way Bring the pile stock up just for a bit of support at the start And then just basically nibble away that tenon. Use a spindle gauge for doing it. Take away as much of that as I can. Well, it's still got tail sucks apart. Stop it, take the tile stuck away. Break as much of that off as I can. Now, sand and finish the top of the hat. So I'll do that and I'll be back in a sec. Alright, just moving the wax off the top. The hat's now done. <coughs> there we have the hat with no damage to the rim. It's the advantage of using that piece of uh, kitchen towel. There we have the hat. Yeah, that looks quite nice actually. Oh yeah, that'll work. Right then, next up is nose. And what I like to use for the nose is a little piece of you. Because it's the basically it's the orangest wood I can get. Till it's rounded. And for the nose, of course, I'm going for a carrot shape. A little low. Over there, it should be grand. Stop it, get rid of the tile stock, it's not needed anymore. It's in the way actually. Drop this slightly. Bring the speed up a little. And just start shaping a large curve. Through the 
hole in the front from the tailstock. Right, grab a detail gouge just to finalise it. In, so it's carrot shape. Right. Grab a parting tool wherever I put it. Parting tool just to put a small tenon in the bottom of it for putting in. Right. And then I'm just going to sand and finish that nose. Right then, there's the nose done. And just before I part it off, though, I just want to touch that tenon with the parting tool to get any finish that's on it off because, yet again, the gluing point. I don't want anything interfering with the glue. Right. Just grab my fret saw and take it off. Right. And there we have his carrot nose. Now all that's left is his pipe, and his pipe is really simple. Right, it's two parts. Get in the jaws properly, you. Thank you. No, actually, do a crossways is stronger. So this pipe is really quick and simple. The first thing I'll do is surround this down of course. This is just a piece of beach. Right. Get rid of that. Yet again, it's in the way. Clean off the top of it. Little hoy. Right. Quick sanding. Let's grab some 150. Quick sanding. I like using beach for the pipes because if I don't paint them, um, the beach looks kind of like a clay pipe. 
and see this how I'm going for like um on this guy I'm going for a very pale colour scheme. I don't want to paint the pipe. Right, put some finish on the pipe. Well, the bowl part of the pipe anyway. The stem in a minute. Let's part this off. And I dropped it. And I'll just hand sand the bottom of that. And that's that part of the pipe done. Same again, just sand and finish that up as far as this uh, cut and polish from Kessel. Right then, I've got my little box of snowman assembly stuff here. And we start putting this guy together. Now I need this, a little grab on in this box. There it is. Right. Now first thing I need to do is decide which way is the front. Obviously the most colourful piece. Right, decide where the hat's going. It should be round about there, and then I need to mark his eyes. Where his eyes will look right. She'll be there. Right. And mark where his nose goes. And then mark where his pipe goes. There I have all my marks. And grab a drill bit. And the drill which I am sitting on. And start putting this stuff together. First thing I gotta do is glue the pipe together. All I'm gonna do is drill a little hole in the side there so that the other part of the pipe can go in. There's the pipe assembled. Right. That's all the straightforward assembly you have to do. Now, now for joint snowman eyes, I have found these things. I've been using them for ages and they work very well. Right, they're basically they're 20 millimeter things that are for the bottoms of like seat chairs and stuff. <clears throat> and they work very well for the joint snowman eyes. For the small ones I use uh, these, which are 10 mil upholstery tacks. That's what I use on my standard snowman. And I'm actually low on them, I'm going to have to order more of them for this year. And then it's a case of Line them up where you want them. Or where I want them. Right. And I made this special little mallet ages ago. 
for putting stuff in so that it doesn't actually damage the heads nose is very very slightly off to one side so let me sort that out first nose needs to go there yep drilling for the nose Make the hole a little bit bigger. Do we? No, I do not. Same thing again. Little drop of thick CA in there. Glue the nose in place. And same for the pipe. I like putting these pipes in at an angle because it just uh, looks better in my head, and anyway. A little deeper. And again. Drop a thick CA in the hole. And in goes the pipe. Right. Now the hat. Grab a little bit of sandpaper. side where the hat's going which we've already decided is there and then remove quick sanding to remove the finish that's there see I on that uh, what I would normally do I'm just gonna do this quickly for the video but I would put a dab of wood glue in the middle of the C8. Just to make sure it stays really solid. Right. Hat on. I'm going to be holding this for a bit of a minute, so what I'll do is I'll come back when it's stuck. 10 inch snowman made out of driftwood, acacia, yew and beech. Uh, as I said they sell quite well and they're quite popular. So if you like that one if you wouldn't mind clicking like on the video and I'll see you in the next one.